So name one company that's achieved Moore's law in the last few years. Here's one. I'm with Cerebrus and this is their new chip, the Wafer Scale Engine 3. Looks familiar, looks kind of like the Wafer Scale Engine 2. However, instead of TSMC 7 nanometer, we're using TSMC 5 nanometer. They've gone from 850,000 cores to 900,000 cores. Wait, that's only 50,000 more, despite moving from seven to five? Well, they've also increased the cache on each core in this chip. They've also increased the computational throughput. Something around going from a four wide to an eight wide SIMD engine. I've spoken to the CEO, Andrew Feldman, and he says that's for a disclosure later in the year but they've got microarchitecture updates. This is a new generation of chip, looks kind of like the old one, but it's meant to bring in a lot more performance. So other specifications, we still have the same 46,225 square millimeters. This is the biggest chip on the market. It's actually all of these are reticles and what they do is they do cross reticle stitching. So this acts as one big chip. Now you're perhaps thinking, but Ian, defects are a thing. Well, they have an extra 1.5% of cores on this chip that are redundant, such that if there is a defect in a core, they can simply root around it. And it is that easy. It means that they have a yield near 100%. Not exactly, sometimes you may get defects where you really can't have them, but the idea is that there's redundancy built into this design. Transistor count. Now, we've seen companies talking about 1 trillion transistors by, the end of, by 2030, by the end of the decade. This has four trillion. We're already here. Now, yes, it's the size of a dinner plate and it is kind of tasty, but we have a four trillion uh, transistor chip. Memory, we've also got an increase in memory. It's, we're, going for, we're going up to 44 gigabytes of on-chip memory and then potentially petabytes of memory off-chip uh, using the MemoryX and the SwarmX ecosystem that uh, Cerebrus has built up. You have a memory bandwidth of 21 petabytes per second and a fabric bandwidth of over 200 petabytes a second or uh, 214 petabits per second. I'm just looking off, note, off screen to my notes here. Um, but the point is that this does 120 petaflops of AI compute. In this context, we're talking about FP16, BF16. This chip also supports FB32 and Intate, so standard um, data formats for AI. They also have a custom FP16, a Cerebrus FP16, for the clients who want to go down that route. So this is Wafer Scale Engine 3. Now, one of these chips is expensive, but it's going to be the same cost as the Wafer Scale Engine 2. Cerebrus are saying that in terms of large language model training, with the increase in cores, the increase in frequency, and all the additional things to do with the core and the cache sizes, they're offering double the performance, generation on generation, for the same cost. Cerebrus is adhering to Moore's law. So where is this gonna end up? They've already got um, one uh, deployment with G42, their strategic partner um, in healthcare. That's a 64, uh, wafer scale engine 3 cs3 system um, that's being built here in the bay area um, they see that's condor galaxy 3 1 and 2 use uh, the wave scale engine 2s and they're built up also in uh, sunnyvale and uh, what is it stockton and uh, dallas so this will be the third one and they plan to uh, deploy nine by the end of the year um, this is just part of you know what ai companies have to do these days they have to iterate on silicon and provide uh, be able to bring partners to the table i frequently say that cerebrus is one of the only AI companies that has generated more revenue than they've actually raised in vc funding and the fact that they're ready to go with this with clients today on day one you know kind of showcases uh, some of some of that uh, deployment previous generation wafer scale um, could scale to 256, 512 nodes. This will scale to over 2,000 nodes, providing a quarter of an exaflop or exop of FP16 compute. In speaking with the CEO here, um, 
they've said that in terms of power, because this thing is 24 kilowatts, right? And you need a lot of current and a lot of power to be able to put this into your data center. They say for a 64 um, chip supercomputer, you need to allocate about two and a half megawatts. So if you do the full scale out of 2096 of these systems, of this wave scale engine threes, you're looking at around about 80 megawatts, which rivals some of the largest supercomputers that are currently being deployed today by the national labs. A couple of final things to note here is that with this uh, WaveScale Engine 2, they are using AMD EPIC processors as the backbone uh, to power you know, the storage and the, and the memory deployment and everything like that. But on top of that, we're looking at um, what it takes to train the largest models. The reason this thing exists is to eliminate the GPU to GPU bottleneck in lots of large language models today, especially when you, you um, scale up how many parameters these model ne models need. In previous generation, uh, Cerebra said that they can train up to one trillion or over one trillion parameters um, with a full scale uh, CS2. With a CS3, with a wave scale engine three, they can go up to 24 trillion parameters. However, the beauty of this design, as explained to me, the Luddite, you can technically train a 24 trillion parameter model uh, on one of these things. Uh, all you need is the chip and you obviously need the memory to support a 24 trillion parameter model. Is it going to be fast? No. But what it does allow you to do is debug. So if you are an engineer working on that sort of scale of system, having hardware that can do it without needing the a full massive supercomputer, without needing 30,000 GPUs in order to just simply test and debug is vital. You've heard of the phrase fail fast, fail often. Having hardware that can support the size of 24 trillion parameters and being available to engineers to do that is you know, one of the benefits of having a chip like this. Now, a little word about Cerebrus's business model. Again, discussions here with the CEO. He was saying how their, their, their offering is, is, is twofold. You either can buy the systems for on-premise solutions. So you literally get a 15U, um, it's, uh, all you need to do is plug in power and ethernet. It's got like 1.2 terabits of ethernet. Um, and as long as you've got enough power in your rack and you can support it with the rest of the infrastructure, then that's fine. The other side of the business is that Cerebus is actually a cloud company. So if you want to rent time on one of the WaveScale engines, whether it's a one, whether it's a two, whether it's a three, you can go to Cerebrus and say, I need this amount of time, I need this amount of chips, and they have the facilities to do that. One of their biggest customers, uh, again, speaking about this G42, this strategic partner, um, those systems are being stood up by Cerebrus and they're being run and managed by Cerebrus. Um, but G42 is the client that technically owns them and has priority on them. When G42 doesn't need them, those resources are being sold back to other cloud customers. And this is the business model that um, Cerebra sees moving forward. There's some HPC business that's mostly on-premises and some of the security and defense and, and some of the medical stuff which needs uh, the data to be on site and secure. They like on-premise solutions. However, some of the work they're doing here is to enable some of that security end-to-end so medical companies like GlaxoSmithKline can do some of that work on the cloud without needing to have a system locally within their infrastructure. Now, the other announcement today by Cerebrus is a partnership with this company, with Qualcomm. Now, I've spoken about Qualcomm a lot in the past. Full disclosure, they are a client of mine. But this is their data center inference uh, ASIC. This is their chip that they put in the data center in order to do inference on AI models. Um, the AI100 was first launched, what, three years ago now? Um, or the AI100, and this is the ultra model which they announced back at Supercomputing 2023. Um, Qualcomm have been very you know, quiet about this chip, um, about where it's deployed, who the customers are. Um, we've got some insights into the architecture, um, but really, the announcement today is the collaboration between Cerebrus and Qualcomm. The Cerebrus chip is focused on training um, it, because it's big and it eliminates uh, some of those training barriers for chip-to-chip -chip connectivity. 
that's where it plays the big, that's where it has the biggest benefit in the ecosystem. You can do inference on it, but it's more cost effective as a training chip. Now, as we look at the ecosystem of AI workloads, you have training and you have inference. Training is a big, bulky workload with very defined parameters. You need this many tokens and your model is going to be this size. Well, inference is a lumpy workload. It depends on the number of users you have. It depends on the number of tokens you need. Uh, it depends on the time of day. It's, a very, it's very scalable. And ultimately, long term, the belief is that the money in machine learning is going to be heavily weighted towards the inference. When we get the models uh, to do what we need to do and then the business model comes around it, the revenue is going to be on the AI inference because that's the endpoint for all these models that are being trained. So you need a dedicated data center inference chip in order to do that. As a result, Cerebrus, is, Cerebrus looked at the market and said, well, what chip works you know, well without, what inference chip works well without, infra, without training chip? And they settled on Qualcomm's AI100 Ultra. Now, the goal here is that with the software packages they've co-developed, you can go and train a model on a Cerebrus WaferScale 2 or WaferScale 3. You can get it optimized specifically for the A100 Ultra. It's this new uh, technique of essentially architecture aware training. If you can make the training model result, the inference model that comes out, look like the hardware you're going to run it on, you can get efficiency out of it. You also, uh, this concept of sparsity in training to help accelerate training. If you have a, a chip, an inference chip that supports sparsity, you can also get benefits uh, to that. There, there are a couple more benefits. I'll, I'll list them on screen. But the whole point here is that with a co-designed training uh, hardware and algorithm and software and an inference chip, they're claiming 10 times better uh, performance per dollar on things like large language models when you pair a Cerebrus a big wave scale engine with Qualcomm AI100 Ultra A6. The business model here is going to be that um, Cerebrus are going to stand up some of these in their cloud for customers. They're already engaging with people today on that software stack on uh, the ability to run it. Qualcomm is also going to be contributing to things like this new MX6 uh, compressed data type standard that also helps with throughput. One of the things that kills inference is memory capacity and memory bandwidth. So some of these features are designed to get around some of that. So this is a standard PCIe card, uh, single slot, you know, eight pin on the front. This is passively called because it's designed to go in a data center, obviously. And you stick 20 of these in a standard HP or Lenovo chassis and away you go. And that's your inference workload. Uh, designed to enable you know, low latency from that big training workload to something that's a bit more scalable. Um, I'm really glad that we're hearing more about Qualcomm's AI deployment because we really need to hear more about it. And for Cerebrus, it makes sense. They're a company that are focused on training for so long. Um, and inference is just a thing that you can do. Um, but actually partnering with a company to help optimize uh, performance per dollar, performance per watt on the inference space, it makes sense. And uh, after all their you know, analysis, they've decided to go with Qualcomm. Um, uh, and Qualcomm has plenty of hardware. They get plenty of wafers from TSMC. So there's going to be plenty of these to go about. We're expecting to hear more about um, the WaferScale Engine 3 and the deployment at the Cerebus AI Day, which is happening next week um, in, in Santa Clara. There's going to be more disclosures about some of the customers, about uh, hopefully some of the architecture details. It's running concurrently with GTC. Um, so if you're in the area, you have to decide which one you want to go to. Uh, I should be there at least by the end of the day. I've got some stuff I have to do with NVIDIA, but I'll definitely be there by the end of the day. Um, and yeah, it's just another stage in Cerebrus's journey. Um, and yeah, wear the merch, why not? Um, if you like this content, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, some of this should be on the newsletter as well. I have a newsletter and then also there's a merchandise store because what influencer doesn't have a merchandise store. We've got some great content coming up for you over the next couple of weeks. So hit that like, subscribe button and stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.